And we back. We're going to talk about the college basketball season so far. Right now, I'm recording this on Veterans Day, 11-11. Shout out to the veterans. Um, the AP poll just came out today. Obviously, we're going to talk about each team in the top 25. And yeah, we're going to give you just a rundown of the games they played. And more importantly, something to know about this team going forward. Kansas played Howard. They beat them by 30. KJ Adams was perfect in the field. Hunter Dickinson, 16 points. Diggy Coyd, his first action, 8 points. Juan played you know, 75% of the field, 6-5. and five. Floyd Bedunga, 13 off the bench. He was big in just 17 minutes. Zach Clemens played well, five points from him. Wilder Evers got a bucket. We saw, <clears throat> excuse me, Zeke Mayo go for 19. Huge game against Howard for him. But to me, it was super impressive how he played against North Carolina. This was, to me, the if not the game of the year, one of the games of the year. Zeke Mayo, 21, 5, and 4 off the bench in just 29 minutes. Also, I want to give a huge shout-out to KJ Adams, 14 points, over 50% of the field, two rebounds, two assists. And Dewan Harris, 10 points, 3 assists, 2 steals, and 2 rebounds. Just a complete game from the National Championship point guard. The Kansas City Hawks have won 47 straight games when ranked as the number one team. That's the fourth longest streak ever. And you know how do they fall from the number one seed? Well, teams can beat them and they can be moved around, but they have won 47 straight. Next up, the number two team in the country, Alabama. They played UNC Asheville. They beat the shit out of them. Mark Sears, National Player of the Year candidate, led the way with 20 points. He looked fantastic. Cliff Amorier in his first game as an Alabama comes tied, perfect from the field, also had eight rebounds as well. But Shrell Wrights out off the bench in just 16 minutes, had 13 points. Muhammad Diabet and Aiden Holloway each had 11 in under 25 minutes apiece. And Jaron Stevenson and true freshman LeBaron Phylon each had 10. LeBaron Phylon had nine assists as well in his debut. And then they played Arkansas State. That game was much closer, right? Darion Reed had 10 points. Jaron Stevenson only had a bucket, only played 10 minutes. Cliff Amorier had 12 points. But the bench was huge, right? Daboot had six off the bench. Grant Nelson had 12 off the bench. I mean, this was an ugly game, but those guys stepped up. And Alabama, number two team in the country, they've had 22 games with 100 points since NATO took over in 1920. That is number two behind Gonzaga, who's also a national championship contender year in, year out. UConn opened up their season, a chance to try to go for three in a row against Sacred Heart, led by Alex Caravan, 27-6. and six. I mean, Alex Caravan's going to be a guy on this team. Liam McNeely, 18 and 10 in his, his debut. Listen, he's going to be a stud. I really wanted him at Kansas. Also have Solo Ball. He had 16 points. And Terrace Reed, a piece for this team. He's going to come off the bench. He had 15 points. He was huge. And then against New Hampshire, again, Caravan led the way with 17. Samson Johnson only played 11 minutes, but he was perfect in the field. But the key to this one was the bench. I mean, it's huge. Um, Isaiah Abraham he had two points in limited minutes. Jaden Ross, 14 points in 23 minutes. Jalen Stewart, four points. Terrace Reed, 11 points, 8 rebounds in just 21 minutes. Yusuf Singer had a bucket. Ahmad Noel had a 3. Hassan Diara, 4 points, 3 rebounds, 3 assists, a steal, and a block in just 15 minutes. I mean, this team is deep. And again, if you told me this team won a national championship and went 3 in a row, I wouldn't be shocked. And Liam McNeely has opened the season with back-to-back -back double doubles. He's the only UConn freshman in the last 15 seasons to do that, except Andre Drummond. The best game on opening day was had by the Gonzaga Bulldogs when they took on the Baylor Bears. This one was not close. I mean, this, I mean, we could go up and down the list, right? Ben Gregg, 75% from the field. Graham EK, 15 and 8. Nolan Aikman, 17 and 6. Ryan Nemhard had 11 assists. In limited minutes, Emmanuel Innocente and Yun Suk Yo each had a bucket. Braden Huff was 7 for 11. Ismaili Diagne had a bucket. Excuse me, I he had four points. Michael Ajayi had nine points in 22 minutes. Drew Stormer had 11 in 21. I mean, this team came in and they cooked, cooked Baylor. And then against Arizona State, obviously a much tougher game. I, I want to give a shout out to Arizona State. I actually thought they were going to win this game. Braden Huff had with 21 points. Khalif Battle had a much better game, 19 and 7 against the Sun Devils. And then Nemhart, 13 and 11. He has been fantastic this season for them. Gonzaga, they have won four straight games against Big 12 teams, and they've won 36 consecutive regular season home openers. The last time they lost a home opener, 98 against Boise State. I wasn't even born. I'm 25 and I wasn't even born. Next up, Auburn. Auburn's the number four team in the country, or excuse me, the number five team in the country. This is the team. They played Vermont. Obviously, there was a lot of stuff going on with this team off the court. But against a good Vermont team, Miles Kelly came in and cooked. 21 points, 18 minutes, 7 threes. Denver Jones had 16 in just 16 minutes. And Chaney Johnson, looking at here, 13 in 16 minutes with 9 rebounds. I mean, they destroyed a good, a good, a good Vermont team. But this is the game everybody wants to talk about. Obviously, Auburn goes to, it wasn't really to Houston, but it was damn near a road game. Tahad Pettiford, 21 off the bench in just 24 minutes, leads this team. Johnny Broom had 20 and 9. Cheney Johnson had 11 and 10 off the bench in just 31 minutes. I mean, listen, Auburn looks really good. Johnny Broom, again, 20 points, five blocks, nine rebounds in his game against Houston. His 10th career game with 20 and five, the second most by any player in the last 15 seasons. The only one with more, Oakland's Keith Benson at 13. 
Next up, got to talk about the Dukies. They take on Maine. I mean, the star of the show, surprisingly, wasn't Cooper Flag. It was Con Knipple. 22 points led the team. Tyrese Proctor had a 10-5 and five game. Caleb Foster, 11 points. I'm looking at the stats here. Mason Gillis, 10 points off the bench. He was huge. And Sion James, the two-lane transfer, 11 points, three rebounds, two steals. I mean, Duke is much deeper than just the guys you think. And it was shown in the game against Army. They beat the shit out of Army. Kamad Malik, 11 points and 14 rebounds in just 22 minutes. Cooper Flag, 13 and 11 in just 25 minutes. Khan Knipple, 15 points. Caleb Foster had 11. Malik Brown had a bucket in seven rebounds in just 18 minutes off the bench. Mason Gillis had eight points in just 18 minutes off the bench. Isaiah Evans had six in just nine minutes. Spence, uh, hell, Spencer Hubbard had a three. And that's not even to mention Devin Harris's five points in seven minutes. I mean, listen, this Duke team is deep. They're leaning on a lot of freshmen, but they have the veteran experience. This is a dangerous team. And I mean, listen, I, only, I know Cooper Flag didn't have the best game one, but Cooper Flag is the first Duke player I'm reading here in the last 25 years to get 30 points, 15 rebounds, and five steals through two games. And Con Knipple is the third Duke freshman in the last 15 seasons, and we know the Duke freshman that played in the last 15 seasons to lead a team in both games in scoring since Marvin Bagley and Jabari Parker. That's it. Those are two number two picks in the draft. And Kamon Malawak, he's the only Duke freshman in the last three years to record a double-double no turnover. He had 11 and 14. I mean, listen, this game against Kentucky is going to be good, but Duke looks great. Next up, we got to talk about Iowa State. They only played one game this week, and they took down the Mississippi State, or excuse me, the Mississippi State, Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils. Golly. Just, you know, they kind of seemed like they were in cruise control. Joshua Jefferson had 10 points. Deshaun Jackson had 9 on 75% shooting. Uh, Taman Limsey, or excuse me, Taman Lipsy, 16 points. Caden Fish got in there, hit a free throw. I mean, I'm looking at the name. I don't know how to pronounce it. Nojus Andrew Syatis had uh, eight points in just 16 minutes. I mean, this is a team. They, they kind of slept walk through this game, but Iowa State looks good. They held Mississippi. They held them to 44 points. That defense is incredible. Um, they held opponents to last season. 50, under 57 times, the only person that did it more, Houston. And Houston was a Jamal shut injury away from going to the Final Four. Speaking of Houston, Houston opened this season against the Jacksonville State Tigers, or Jackson State Tigers, to beat the shit out of them. I mean, what we expect, right? Like I said, Joseph Tugler and just, I mean, he was 5-7 and seven in 25 minutes. Juwan Roberts had 14-6 and six in just 20 minutes. Milos Uzan, the transfer from Oklahoma, he had 8 points and 10 assists, again, in just 26 minutes. LJ Cryer had 16 points in 19 minutes. And then off the bench, Cedric Laugh had a couple buckets. Cordelius Jefferson had four points in five minutes. Mercy Miller had seven. Ramon Wonker had 10. Miley Williams had 15 on seven and nine shooting. I mean, he was scoring. They beat the shit out of Jacksonville or Jackson State. I keep calling him Jacksonville State. I don't know why. Against Auburn, it was just a slugfest on defense. Javier Francis only played nine minutes. He did. He was efficient in that time, but just couldn't get anything going. I mean, Milo Suzan, he was good. 10 points. Off the bench, Joseph Tugler, I'm looking at here, 10 and 7. That was a, you know, he was the bright spot off the bench. He also had Terrence Arsenal. Only played 12 minutes, but did have five points. Just the offense needs to get clicking at a higher level. You're really seeing the loss of Jamal Shedd for this Houston team. And that loss snapped Houston's 17-game win streak against non-conference opponents in the regular season. The last time they lost was to Alabama in December 10th of 2022. I mean, that you know, almost two calendar years ago. Next up, Arizona. They started the season off against Kinesis. And to me, this was the K.J. Lewis show. 14 points, 4 rebounds, 4 assists. But also Jaden Bradley, 15 points in just 23 minutes. Also had 4 rebounds and 4 assists. And 4 steals, a 4-4-4. But the real winner of this was their bench. I mean, I'm looking at it here. This is incredible. In 17 minutes, Henry Vassar, 8 points. Will Mena came in, had a bucket. In just 10 minutes, Motijas Krivas had 9 points and 5 rebounds. Conrad Martinez had 5 points. I mean, shit, even Addison Arnold and Grant Wheatman each had a bucket. I mean, three different guys that don't get tick got buckets against Kinesis. This was just an absolute Arizona annihilation. And then they played Old Dominion, and it was an annihilation. I mean, shit, they beat him by almost 60 points. Toby Awanka in just 21 minutes, 18 and 15 with a steal and two blocks. Trey Towson got going, had nine points of his own in just 18 minutes on 66% shooting. KJ Lewis, eight points, 50% from this field. And then the bench, we finally got to see Carter Bryant kind of get unleashed 12 points in just 19 minutes. I'm looking at here, four rebounds, assists, and two steals. Want to give a shout out again to Connor Martinez, five points, four assists, and two rebounds in just 11 minutes. And then in four minutes, Grant Wheatman, two steals, two points. Listen, if Arizona's walk-ons are cooking, you know they're a good team. And I know I didn't mention it too much, but Tennessee transfer Toby Awaka, he had 18 and 15 against Old Dominion. That's his third career double-double. He had eight of Arizona's 24 offensive rebounds. That's the most they had in a game since 2005. So they're a team that's huge. They've got big front line, and they're going to crash the glass. Next up, North Carolina. They lost to Kansas, but they took on Elon. This was a game that was a little shaky. LA could owe 17 points, 8 assists. Seth Trimble also had 15. I mean, they were able to take down Elon, but the game against Kansas, they really needed guys to step up. 
and they did, but it was not the guys you expected. Obviously, Jalen Washington, 7-9 and nine in just 18 minutes. Excuse me. <clears throat> Jalen Withers had 11-9 and nine in just 24 minutes. And the reason those guys didn't play much, uh, James Brown came in for a spurt, had a bucket. But Van Allen Lubin was an unsung hero, 10-3 and three in just 14 minutes, perfect from the field. And then Ian Jackson, in just 15 minutes, 10 points, 2 rebounds, and an assist. He was 80% for the field. He came in, he had a nice step back 3 on A.J. Storr. Listen, the bench was a big reason this team was even close in this game. Valen Lubin was amazing. And the defense is where they need to improve, right? They allowed 53 points to Kansas in the first half. I know it's a road game against the number one team in the country. It's the most they allowed in one half since they allowed 56 to Kentucky in December of 2016. Next up, we got Tennessee. I mean, this is a team they took on Gardner Webb. Tennessee, we know they play an ugly brand of basketball. I mean, this this was tough, right? Igor Milicic had eight and four in just 17 minutes. Chaz Lanier went and got buckets, 18 points. Jemai Meshack had 10, 3, 4, 1, and 4. I mean, he was everywhere. J.P. Estrella had 4 off the bench in just 11 minutes. Cade Phillips, 7 and 4. He also had um, Jordan Ganey with 16 points in 28 minutes. I mean, he was everywhere. Three steals as well. And then they went to Louisville. This was a game uh, I was kind of surprised it was. They seemed like they were more attentive to Louisville than a Gardner Webb. Felix Akpara, 10 and 6 in 27 minutes. Igor Milicic, 7 points, only in 12 minutes, but he was 75% from the floor. Zakai like Ziegler finally returned to form, 19. He had 11 turnovers, though. That was, listen, 7 assists, but 11 turnovers by one player is fucking unreal. Cade Phillips, perfect, off the bench with re 6 rebounds as well. I mean, shit, Bishop Boswell got in there, got a bucket real quick. Jordan Ganey came off the bench. He's there to score 9 points, 4 assists, 2 steals. Jordan Ganey, good player for this Tennessee team. But against Louisville, they were 10 for 19 from deep. They only shot more than higher than 50% once last season against number 11 Auburn. If they can shoot 50% from deep, they're going to be dangerous. Baylor played probably the toughest two-game stretch to start the season. They went to pretty much to Gonzaga. And listen, they got fucking they, I mean, they were not ready. I mean, listen, the only person on that team that did it really anything was Josh Jamwana. 10.6 rebounds, three steals. Perfect from the field in 24 minutes. Um, they didn't have much time. They had to play Arkansas. And again, a road game. But they were much better. Again, Josh Ojamona, perfect from the field. Only played 20 minutes, but Norchad O'Meara finally played really well. 15 and 12, 70% from the field. Jeremy Roach had 13. He was 50% from the field. And then off the bench, Robert Wright, 10 points in just 17 minutes, 75% from the field. He was a big reason Baylor was able to take down Arkansas. And their win against Arkansas was its 27th win versus ranked opponents in the last five seasons. That's the second most in Division One. You want to know who number one is? The number one team in the country, Kansas. So Baylor is a force to be reckoned with, even though they got blown out by Gonzaga. Next up, the reigning runner-up. Purdue, they took on Texas, Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Fletcher Lawyer, 6 for 10 from the field, 21 points, 60% from deep. He was great. Trey Coffin ran 15 and 9. Daniel Jacobson, the theoretical Zach Eady replacement, 13 points, 7 rebounds. Braden Smith, 12, 15, and 8. Two rebounds away from a triple-double. And then in just 17 minutes, Miles Colvin, he came in to score the damn ball, 14 points. I mean, they, you know, slow start. Purdue's still trying to figure out how to play. They have had Zach Eady for like the last three years. So it's a different team this year. And then they took on Northern Kentucky. Obviously, Jacobson got hurt. Trakoff and Wren did play well, 14 points in just 24 minutes. Fletcher Lawyer, again, led the team in scoring with 16. Jakari Harris started this game. He had five points and four rebounds in just, or, yeah, four, four assists in just 21 minutes. And then off the bench, Caleb First, eight in just 12 minutes. Will Burke, seven on 75% from the field. I mean, listen, this is a team that's going to have to replace a lot of production already. So we're going to be interesting to see how good Purdue is. And it's interesting because Fletcher Lawyer, um, he was 14, or excuse me, he was four for five from three, so 80%. But Purdue is only nine of 22, but and they were 50% of the field, but only nine of 14 for the free throw line. Purdue has some shooting interest in, their shooting is buffed by a couple guys being really good. So they're not necessarily a good shooting team like they were last year. I mean, Creighton's home opener, there, there's nothing else to talk about. They took on UT, Rio, UTRGV, Kalkbrenner, 49 points and 11 rebounds on 20 of 22 shooting. That's all you need to know about the opener. Then they come back and take on Fairlight Dickinson, Kalkbrenner, again, 24 on 9 of 10 shooting. I mean, like, Stephen Ashworth also had 15, 5 rebounds, 9 assists, 5 of 8. All of those came from the 3-point line. And then off the bench, Jackson McAndrew had his best game this season, 13 points in just 14 minutes. He was out there going. So, I mean, Creighton looks good. They just need their tertiary pieces to score. But Kalkbrenner's 49 points are the fourth most by a single player, by a ranked team in history. Like, that's unreal. Marquette, the number 15 team in the country, they took on Stony Brook. They beat the shit out of them. And it was because of two guys. Cam Jones, 32 points in just 26 minutes. 14 of 16. His only two missed shots were from deep. 
And then Chase Ross, 23 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists in just 25 minutes, 9 of 11. He did miss for 3 free throws, but he only missed 2 shots from the field. Those are the guys, if you're going to be Mar- if you're going to watch Marquette, those are the two guys that are going to lead this charge, this team. And then they took on George Mason. This game was close in the first half, and then the second half they kind of ran away with it. Cam Jones, again, 24, 5, 8, 3 steals in a block, 9 of 14 shooting. He played almost the entire game. Cam Jones is an absolute monster. And in his season opener... He had his fifth 30-point game since the beginning of last season, so, you know, the last 40 games. That's the second most in the Big East besides Jay Epps, who had seven. Next up, Indiana. They took on the Suey Cougars. Listen, you need to know one name for this game. Mackenzie Ngbako, 31-9, 13 of 17 in the field. That's it. That's all you need to know. Then they took on Eastern Illinois. Different story. Malik Renault, 17 points on 45% from the field. No, 75%. 66%. Dude, I can't do math. I'm trying to do quick math. 66 Mackenzie Ngbako led the team 18 7 Four and two, 70 percent from the field. Omar Balo, 17, 9 and 3 on 80 percent from the field. But that was really it. Miles Rice didn't do much. Five and five. Just wasn't really assertive. Bryson Tucker did have a good Bryson Tucker. That's I know that's such a funny name. He did have a good game off the bench. 12 and 6 in just 21 minutes. Langdon Hatton hit a quick bucket. And Trey Galloway, man, the point guard spot off the bench. Five and eight in just 18 minutes. I mean, Indiana looks good. Um, but it's interesting to see how much of their production comes from that front line. Like Malik Renault, Omar Balo, and Mackenzie Ibaka, they had almost 60% of Indiana's points against EIU. The last time Indiana had three players at least 15 points was February of last year. Like that, Indiana looked good, but they got some things they got to shore up. Next up, Cincinnati, they took on Arkansas Pine Bluff, beat the fuck out of them. In just 24 minutes, Aziz, ba- Aziz Banadago, perfect from the field, 11 and 8 in just 24 minutes. But the team was led by Simon Lucosius, 20 points and 4 rebounds in just 22 minutes, 80% from the field. He's a stud. Dan Skilling, 17, 11, and 4 in just 23 minutes. He's an absolute monster. I mean, shit, their bench. I'm looking at their bench right now. Errington Page, 9 on 50% from the field in 13 minutes. Tyler Betsy had 6. He was 50% with 4 rebounds as well. Connor Hickman in just 23 minutes, 13 points off the bench. Shit, they st- I forgot they even had C.J. Frederick was doing this. He hit a 3. I mean, shit, this Cincinnati team is deep. They can shoot the shit out of the ball. And when they played a Moorhead State, and, you know, this game was kind of blown out the whole time. But again, Aziz Bonadago, 12-5 and five in just 22 minutes. Dylan Mitchell, was the Texas transfer, was perfect in 23 minutes, 14-9. and nine. Simon Lukosi is 14 on 6-7 shooting with 6 assists. Shit, Jizzle James had a good game, 14 points. He's more of a showrunner. He played really well in the opener. But, I mean, like, Arrington Page had 13 points. Seven, he had eight free throws in just 17 minutes. Got the line, five rebounds. I mean, this is a team maker. They're deep. They're going to be a challenger in the Big 12 even though there's four teams, five teams in the top 15. But I do want to I do want to kind of note, they beat uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff, you know, by 45. And they shot 60% from the field. But the thing is, it's interesting, they shot 56% from the free throw line. And then they only shot 60, they shot less than 69% from the free throw line as a team last year. Again, against Moorhead State, they shot 73%. But it's interesting to see how they're a really good scoring team, but they, they're, they're a, they struggle to shoot from the free throw line. So it's interesting to see if there's going to be droughts for them. Arkansas took on Lipscomb. This is a team, it's, you know, Cal's first season down in Fayetteville. Still trying to figure out the rotations. I'm looking at it here. I mean, Big Z, Zamani Ramis, if he's sick, if you don't know who that is, he is a stud. 12 points on five. He's only missed shot was a three. Adu Thiero played well in limited minutes, eight points. John L. Davis, the FAU transfer, 15 and six. Billy Richmond had four off the bench, also had a steal and a block. Carter Knox, or excuse me, yeah, Carter Knox, five points, two rebounds and a steal. If you're not familiar with him, he is the brother of Kevin Knox. The only guy to stay from last year's team, Trayvon Brazil, comes off the bench 6-8 in just 22 minutes. And Jonas Adu, the Tennessee transfer, is still working him back from injury. 2.3 rebounds in 7 minutes. Listen, it was an interesting game. Committed 12 turnovers, which you know, a little a little high. Just a solid defensive game. And then they took on Baylor. And listen, Baylor is Baylor kind of whooped their ass. Adu Thier was the only one that really did anything. 24 points on 66% from the field. That's it. I mean, listen, they didn't have offense from anywhere else. The guards were getting clamped up by Jeremy Roach, VJ Edgecombe. And Jaden Nunn. And Arkansas, listen, there's a lot to like. They're a young team. Boogie Fland is the first Arkansas freshman to record 15-5 and five since Anthony Black did it. Anthony Black, you know, stud. Top 10 NBA pick. So Boogie Fland, he's going to continue to have good games. He's going to get better. Speaking of Kentucky and Coach Cal, they took on Wright State. Really good game. Otega Owe led this team with 21 points. Amari Williams, a 12-13 and 13 double-double in just 20 minutes. Again, they beat Wright State by 40. So a lot of these guys were getting in and getting action. Andrew Carr had a quick 11. Lamont Butler, 15, or excuse me, 14, 5, and 3. Ansley Almonor came off the bench 11 points in just 13 minutes. 
Kobe Brea, 18 points in just 20 minutes, had went seven or eight from the field, perfect from deep. I mean, this is a team, they're deep. They play very differently than Kentucky has played in the past, but it's a different coach, new system, completely new Wildcats. And then they took on Bucknell, and Bucknell, a um, little different game. Obviously, Andrew Carr came in 11 points for him. Amari Williams, 11, 13 and 14 in just 20 minutes. I mean, listen, again, they beat them by 28 points. So guys got in and got their shit done. Kobe Brea, 20 points, 6 rebounds, 7-11 from the field, 6-8 of eight from deep in just 26 minutes. He is a stud for this Kentucky team. And they've scored 100 points in each of their first two games for the first time since 1978-79. Kobe Brea, 19 points a game so far, 14-19 in the field. He's a monster. I can't believe they're not starting him. Next up, Florida. Obviously, Florida's dealing with some stuff off the floor. Um, they took on South Florida, and you need to know two names. Walter Clayton, 29 points on 66% from the field, and Will Richard, 25 points on like 45, not 45, that's like 56% of shooting. I, it's Chandler 17, six rebounds. I mean, dude's a monster. Missed five of his seven misses are from Florida. Took down South Florida. And then in just 50, 22 minutes, Alex Condon, 13 points, five rebounds. He was a big key to their success as well. And then against Jacksonville, they beat them by 21 points. Alex Condon actually led the way perfect from the field. Missed five free throws, but did have 23 points. Elijah Martin, 15 points, four rebounds, four assists, and six steals. And then Sam Alexis, 10 points off the bench with seven rebounds and four blocks. I mean, this Florida team, they're deep, and he's the first Florida player to go 20. Blah, blah, blah. He's the first Florida player to get 20 points and 100% of the field since Andrew Nemhard in 2019. Also, the fact that Andrew Nemhard is still in college, kind of insane. Oh, no, Ryan Nemhard. Andrew Nemhard's in the league. Duh. Uh, sorry, I'm tweaking. Next up, Ohio State. This is a team that started off unranked. They jumped into the top 25 at number 21. They took on their only game this week was against then number 19, Texas. Bruce Thornton, 25-5 and five on 70% from the field, 75 from deep. Led the way. He was the reason the Buckeyes won this game. But not to be out shine, Devin Royal came off the bench 16 points in just 25 minutes, three rebounds, an assist, and a steal, as well as John Mobley, 14 points in 13 minutes. Perfect from deep. Only missed two actual shots. Listen, Ohio State, team not a lot of teams are talking about. And they hadn't won a game when they played a ranked team to start the season. And they're 2-1 and one against AP-ranked opponents under head coach Jake Diebler, who took over last season. Listen, Ohio State's a sneaky team, especially in a wide-open Big Ten. Next up, another team that jumped into the top 25, replacing UCLA, St. John's. This is a team I did not expect to see here. Zuby UGO4, they took on Fordham, beat him by 32. He was, you know, 2-4, of four, 5 points. Aaron Scott, 12-5 and five in 24 minutes. RJ Lewis, 12 points, 2 rebounds and an assist. He fouled out. He did foul out in 12 and 13 minutes. It's kind of funny. Kadari Richmond, 16 points, 9 rebounds, 5 assists. Simeon Wilter led the way with 17 points, 3 rebounds. Also had guys coming off the bench like Ruben Prey. He had... Six points in nine minutes. Um, Brady Dunlap, nine points, and you know, he, he played well. Five rebounds and two assists as well. Vince Wuchku, the USC transfer, six, four, two, and two stocks in just 15 minutes. I mean, listen, this is a deep St. John's team. They were a team that made a run last season to the final, or excuse me, to the, the bubble. Weren't able to make it, but this season they look like they are. And then they took on Quinnipiac, and listen, you need to know one name from this game. Brady Dunlap in 23 minutes came off the bench, 20 points, four rebounds, and a steal, 75% from the field. That's the guy you need to know. Only missed two threes was like, that's like, what, 70% from three? That's the guy you need to know. And against Quinnipiac, they did have four double-figure scorers, but again, Brady Dunlap, five for seven from the arc. RJ Lewis had 24 and 13 for his third career double-double. Davion Smith had a 13 and 10 double-double. And he's the first player since Justin Simon to get 10 points, 10 rebounds, or excuse me, 10 assists, five, five rebounds, and three steals in a single game. They take on Wagner next. I'm excited to see more St. John's. Next up, Texas A&M. They fell all the way from 13 to 23. This is a team they took on UCF. They lose their season opener on the road. Wade Taylor did not have a good game. Pharrell Payne led the lead way with 15 points and six rebounds in just 22 minutes. He played great. Had an assist, two stocks as well. And then Anderson Garcia, underrated, 4.6 rebounds, two assists. Did have five fouls in just 26 minutes off the bench. But those two are the reasons they were even in this game. And then against East Texas A&M, the whole team found their form. I mean, Pharrell Payne, eight points on 60% shooting with six rebounds in just 17 minutes. Shit, Jace Carter had a bucket with two rebounds, assist, and two steals. Wade Taylor, more, more or less, just ran the show. 10 points, six assists, a steal, and two rebounds in just 21 minutes. Solomon Washington, 4-4-2 and two in just 18 minutes. I mean, Hayden Hefner had 13 in just 17 minutes. I mean, this team was, I mean, that's not even, we're not even on the bench yet, right? Yeah, Chris McDermott had a bucket. Henry Coleman led the way with 14 off the bench. That's not even true. 14 and 8. You also had Zurich Phillips with 18 and 5. You had Manny Obaseki with 14 and 3. I mean, these guys, Texas A&M came in and dominated East Texas A&M. They had something to prove. And against Texas A&M or Texas A&M Commerce, they were known as 10 players saw at least 17 minutes of action and five of them scored in double figures. So A&M, they need to lean more on the team depth rather than just trying to rely on Wade Taylor. 
Next up, Rutgers. They move up from 25 to 24. They only played one game, uh, beat Wagner. We didn't get to see Ace Bailey, um, which is kind of disappointing, but Dylan Harper looks incredible. 20 points, three runs, four assists, three steals. I mean, he dominated this game, and that's not even to mention the other guys in the team. Jeremiah Williams, 10 points, two assists, a steal, a block, and a rebound in just 24 minutes of action. We saw another freshman in unsung hero, Lathan Somerville, 11 and 8 off the bench. He was awesome. In P.J. Hayes, 12 points on 66% from the field. Listen, this is a deep Rutgers team. Also had five assists. That's not true. He had three assists. And he had, tw- again, Dylan Harper, 20 points. We didn't get to see Ace Bailey. The most by a freshman in the last 25 years. Seven for eight in the paint. And he was perfect on shots within five feet of the rim. I mean, listen, once Ace Bailey gets back, this is going to be a dangerous Rutgers team. Finally, Ole Miss. This is a team that they played Long Island. Listen, Jalen Murray, 24 points, three runs, two assists. He's out there to score 70% from the field. Played great. Also had Dre Davis, 11 points, five rebounds, two blocks and a steal. They're the reasons they beat the hell out of Long Island. But this game against Grambling was concerning. The only reason they won this game was because of Dre Davis. 13 points, four rebounds and assists. He was everywhere. Too many guys tried to play hero ball on this team, and I think they're still trying to figure out how to play together because this is a team that's mostly comprised of transfers. Ole Miss, they need to get it together. And the defense is huge. They play really good defense under Chris Beard. They scored 26 points off. They forced 21 turnovers against Grambling, 26 points off that. That means they were, you know, they scored on 13 of the 21 turnovers. Matthew Morrell didn't really shoot the ball offensively, but had seven steals. They outscored the Tigers, the Grambling Tigers, in 13 to 2 in fast break points. That's the difference. That's it. That's all I want to talk about for college basketball. I don't know how much more of this I'm going to do in terms of talking about college basketball. Might talk about it more throughout the season, but for right now, uh, if you guys want to see me do anything else, let me know. Comment down below. And uh, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video. Find out if they're right.